This video will walk you through doing linear mixed effects models with an example of red pine trees. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the tidyverse package and we're going to read in the data. Uh, so these data are from 450 red pine trees growing at the Cloquet Forestry Center in northern Minnesota. Uh, and so we'll run the first chunk of code. And we can see the pine data set. We're going to call this data set pine. We'll just open up that quick. Uh, we have different uh, tree numbers here, uh, they're in different plot numbers, they're in different cover types, and we have the diameter at breast height measured in inches, and the tree height measured in feet. And so the idea here, we're going to predict tree height, because the height of trees is difficult information to obtain, but the diameter at breast height, or the DBH, is pretty easy to obtain. And so we will uh, use some models that use DBH as our independent variable, and height as our dependent variable. So back to the code. We're first going to look at the data. We're going to plot the data with a linear regression line. Uh, we're familiar with the ggplot tool. Uh, we're going to plot using the pine data set, dvh on the x, height on the y-axis. We're going to plot a scatter plot with genome point. We're going to say stat smooth. We want to fit a linear model, or LM. I'm going to do some things where I'm going to make some labels. So I'm going to label it with a title an x-axis label and a y-axis label. And then I'm going to tidy up my ggplot code. And I'm going to use the theme. Uh, and so this is just saying, uh, I want to change the panel background. I want to fill it with nothing. Uh, and you'll see it just fills it with basically blank white space. And then the axis line will say, give me black lines for the axis colors. And so we'll run this line of code. And so you can see, let me zoom in on this a bit so we can better see what's going on. Uh, but you can see that if we look at dbh and height, uh, there's a good relationship there. Uh, not surprising, as trees get larger in diameter, they also get taller in height. Uh, and so good to see that trend there. So the first thing we can do, uh, if we can uh, do something like fitting a simple linear regression of red pine tree height. And so we've done this uh, for many weeks now. And so let's just see what that is. We're going to use the lm function, and we're going to say height is our dependent variable, dbh is our independent variable. And then we're going to do the summary of that model. And so we can look at the output. And we can see the residuals here. We can see the coefficients. What I see immediately about the coefficients, it looks like a good model. That is, the, the p-values for the intercept and the p-value for the dbh, or the slope, is significantly different from, say, 0.05. It's a very, very small p-value. We get an R squared of 0.59. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's reflective of the data. This is a pretty strong relationship between dBH and height. And so let's keep this in mind, and let's compare our mixed models to what we might get for uh, this simple linear regression. So let's take a closer, ex a closer look at the cover type. Uh, and so I'm going to make a plot here with ggplot that uses faceting for each of the different cover types that are found at the Cloquet Forestry Center. And the idea here is that we might be able to use the cover type as a random effect in our mixed model. And so let me run this line of code, or this chunk of code, and you'll see what, what pops up. And this we're going to have to zoom in on. Uh, but what you can see here is... Uh, differences in how the different cover types impact the height of these red pine trees. And now in this case, as you can see, most of the red pine trees are found in the red pine cover type, but there are also other cover types where you might find red pine trees. And so as an example, in the aspen cover type, there are a large number of red pine trees. In the jack pine cover type, there are some red pine trees. And so we might think that we see differences here. You can kind of see, well, we certainly have a lot of data here in red pine, but we don't have many. We've got a few just in the balsam fir, a few in this cut forest type or cover type. And so might we be able to take something about the cover type and have that be a random effect in our model of tree height? And so um, that's what we're going to do eventually. We can also look at the differences by plot number. So I'm going to show the same kind of graph, uh, but this time I'm going to facet by the plot number. Uh, and so this, if I remember correctly, it might take a little while to load because 
uh, there are quite a few plots that are a part of our data set. <laughs> yeah, so you can see it. Yeah, we're really going to have to zoom in on this. Um, and so let's zoom in on that all the way. What you're seeing here is a scatter plot, a series of scatter plots. Each facet, so 5, 11, 13, 15, these are all of the plot numbers, so different areas in the forest where they've measured red pine trees. And you can see the, the big differences. So some plots have quite a few red pine trees. So you look at plot 24, it's got quite a few red pine trees, all of about the same height, whereas many other plots have very few red pine trees. Uh, and so say uh, plot 304 has looks like two observations. And so we could then use something like plot number maybe as our random effect. And so keep that in mind as well. And so we're going to fit some mixed models uh, using the cover type and the plot number as random effects. And to do that, we need the LME4 package. Um, and so install it if you haven't installed it. Uh, if you have installed it, call it using the library. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Elmer or the lemur, uh, depending on your preference, uh, the lemur or the elmer function to fit a linear mixed effects model. Now this is quite similar to the simple linear regression. Height is our response variable. DBH is our independent variable. Now to specify that we want cover type as a random effect on the intercept, we write something like this. We say one and then put a pipe cover type. So one pipe cover type will specify cover type as a random effect on the intercept of the model. And the data set that we're using is the Pine data set. And so the thing we'll want to do is we'll want to run that and then we'll get the summary of it. And so when we run those or that model, we can see the output looks kind of similar to what a simple linear regression looks like. It still spits out the formula. It gives us the residuals. And then it gives us some information about how useful the random effects are. And so we have the variance and the standard deviation for the random effect of cover type on the intercept. And so we also have the fixed effects. Now what we call the fixed effects are the, really the values of beta 0 and beta 1, or the intercept and the slope. Now you can notice here, now we don't get p-values from the output here. But we do get values of t and values of the standard error and the estimates themselves. And so here you should see that they're kind of similar. This 25 value was kind of similar to what we found in the simple linear regression. And this 3.0585 was kind of close to the value we found in the simple linear regression. But they're also somewhat different. And so that's how we can look at the coefficients if we wanted to get them from the linear mix model. We could also plot the residuals. That might be something we'll want to do. And so remember, ideally, let's zoom in on this a little bit more. We'd have a, kind of a random pattern of the residuals. And this looks pretty good for these 450 red pine observations. Uh, remember, we have the fitted values on the x-axis and the residual values on the y. And this looks like a pretty good model. We're not seeing really any trends in the residuals here. We might also want to view the random effects, just see what the values are. So they're going to vary for each cover type, but what are the specific values? Here we can look at, remember that graph we saw of the different cover types? Uh, we can think about these values representing how much we would change the intercept. So if we were in the aspen cover type predicting the growth of red pine trees, we would take away 2.43 units from our value of the intercept for the fixed effect to find out what the impact of red pine height would be in the aspen cover type. And so the assumption about these random effects, remember, is that the, their mean will be zero with some standard deviation. And so that's the important output from a linear mixed effects model. Now we might be interested in looking a little more and looking at the different regression lines for each cover type. Now we can still plot the points. We're going to use ggplot for this. Uh, we're going to plot the points. And then we're going to use geom line 
and we're going to use what we call the predict function. So when you get to doing random effects, if you use predict functions, it's able to best predict things that you're uh, that you're interested in. And so I'll leave the code there. I won't step through all the code, but just know that it's predicting based on the linear mixed effects model what the response variable in our case tree height turns out to be. And so it will look similar to one of the first graphs we made in this analysis. So let me zoom in on this. And here we can see, uh, again, it's the same diameter and height relationship, but here you can see the different lines. Remember, our intercept is different. So if you can imagine extending uh, all of these lines through the y-axis, they would all cross the y-axis at different points. And so our intercept then is random depending on the cover type. Uh, and so you can see here, for whatever reason, the Scotch pine cover type has the highest uh, random effect. Uh, and so it indicates a greater mean or a greater value for a given uh, diameter at breast height. And so that's the random effects in action right there if we apply it to the intercept. So our next stage, we're going to fit a different model now. Our next stage, we're going to fit a linear mixed model with the plot number nested within cover type as a random effect on the intercept. So the next model we'll call pine.lme2, and we'll use the Elmer function again. Same thing, we're predicting height based on its diameter at breast height. Now the key thing here is to specify the random effect for the plot number nested within the cover type, we write it like this. We write the number one in a pipe, cover type backslash plot num. And that black backslash indicates that plot number is nested within the cover type. And so that will run that. And then we'll get the summary output. And so we'll run that code. And you can see it looks very similar. The main thing being, uh, now we have two estimates of the variance for the random effects. We still have the cover type, but now we have the plot number nested within the cover type, and we have a different variance and, and standard deviation for that. And again, you should see the estimates for these values, 30.5 and 2.7. They're kind of similar, or quite close to some of the other values we looked at for the simple linear regression and the first linear mix model we fit, but they're also somewhat different. And so another thing we might want to do is to plot the residuals. So this, these are the residuals for, again, our second uh, graph here. Let's zoom in on them, make them nice, really big, so we can see what's going on. Again, these look pretty good. I do notice some, we see kind of a megaphone pattern here. Uh, you know, if, if I were to publish these data, I might think about first transforming the data to see if I can resolve some of this megaphone pattern. But for our purposes, this is nothing very serious to worry about. Um, I might think about trying to transform the data before running the model to take care of some of these larger values as you have taller tree heights. But for the most part, not a terrible looking residual plot. So then we can review, uh, or we could just look at the different random effects. And so let's look at what those turn out to be. Now here we're going to have a lot more output because we have not only the cover type random effects, but also the plot numbers nested within the cover types. And so you can see I'm still scrolling through all these uh, random effects. And so this would indicate instead of just adding the cover type random effect, now we have for each plot number say for plot five in the red pine cover type, we would have to take away 10.82 units from the intercept to adjust the slope or adjust the intercept for that plot number nested within that cover type. And so we could try, I'm not gonna make a plot of this because there would be way too many lines because we have so many plot numbers, but we could also plot this and see how for each plot number and each cover type, the intercepts would again differ by quite a bit depending on which plot and which cover type you're in. And so the other thing to do, the last thing to do to kind of answer the question, you know, does random effects, does mixed models matter at all with the data I'm looking at? And so one way I like to do that is just to use the AIC function to give you the 
Akeki's information criteria. And remember the AIC, we're looking for the lower the value, the better the model. So we're still predicting tree height for our three different models that we fit, but we want to know which one is best, which one has the lowest AIC. And so in this case, you can see, uh, you can note that the simple linear regression had the lowest number of degrees of freedom, uh, but then we added one more degree of freedom for each new random effect we added. Um, and so in this case, it looks like the AIC is lowest for the model LME2, which was the model with plot number nested within cover type as a random effect. And so the AIC there was 3422, compared to the simple linear regression 3676, compared to the first linear mixed effects model 3659. And so in this case, we might think that, yes, it looks like plot number nested within random or nested within cover type looks to be a useful random effect for our model. And we might go ahead and uh, maybe use that model if we were to predict uh, tree heights in our example at the Cloquet Forestry Center. So this code and this data set should help you to kind of give you a primer uh, into mixed effects models and how we might use it in a regression context.